coach got to be pleased with, uh, despite the fact that Tulsa shot 58% in the second half, they only got 19 shots. He held them to 28 points and uh, and definitely made some some uh, adjustments in the second half defensively. Yeah, they're they're a very good basketball team, and they've beaten you know Oklahoma State, K State. Uh, uh, they they beat Memphis, they beat Connecticut, so certainly had our undivided attention after the win the other night. We wanted to get a streak going. We wanted to start having some positive momentum uh, heading into our uh, the next road game. So, boy, they in the second half they they, sh they we couldn't we couldn't stop them. They built the six or seven point lead, whatever it was, and then um, they were beating us to every loose ball. We couldn't we couldn't stop them, and then we got a little stagnant and went east and west with our offense. So the timeout was was a, was a turning point. I mean, the guys really responded to a little challenge, and we started then getting every loose ball. Some um, Dexter Dennis with the steal at the end, but Dexter Dennis uh, one time by himself, another time with Jamarius Burton. They were almost fighting over it. They were so hungry for the ball. Marcus McDuffie and um, and and Jamie Ichinike on the offensive end coming up with loose balls and rebounds. So. Uh, that, that was the key. The energy, the fans got into it. All of a sudden, it was a snowball effect, and I think we ended the game on something like a 27-7 to seven or 8 run. You know, you mentioned that timeout. One of the things you did coming out of it was you put on the press, and that seemed to maybe just give your team a little bit of energy from that stagnant period you were talking about, but you also turned them over a couple of times. Yeah, we, um, you know, they, they just made a couple of mistakes, and sometimes that happens when, when guys that are unaccustomed to handling the basketball or asked to handle the basketball. I remember one time in particular, I think it was Curran Scott right over here just mishandled it and lost it, and we came up with it. But we weren't coming up with those balls. I don't care. We weren't getting, we weren't seeing the ball. It wasn't like we weren't giving effort to go get the ball. We we weren't reacting or seeing the ball when it was loose. And that's something that we've got to get a lot better at. That's on me, and I'll continue to try to work with these guys. But I thought we played some beautiful basketball down the stretch and uh, beat a good team. And just really worked them over on the boards. As a matter of fact, 13 offensive rebounds uh, in the ball game. Yeah, we knew that um, they do a lot of things really well. They're one of the best teams in the country at scoring at the free throw line, so they get fouled. Uh, we only they we held them to believe it or not, 21 is under their average. I think they average 24 free throw attempts on the year, um, and they play the matchup zone, which is a very good defense. But it's harder to box out anytime you run a zone, as you know, Dave and. We, were, we told the guys, we need at least two or three guys every time we shoot pounding the glass because the, the number, you play a numbers game. You know, hopefully we can outnumber them uh, with bodies uh, on, that, on that backboard. And in the end, Jamie had a couple. Uh, Jamie, uh, the telling sign was a fi our five men at halftime had one rebound. I think one a rebound, maybe two. It was Jamie, Poor Bear, and Asbjorn. And they just weren't, they weren't pursuing the basketball. But in the second half, we end up uh, pounding them on the offensive glass to give us extra chances. And when you only shoot 45%, you need all those. And right toward the end of the game, when the game was still somewhat in doubt, Jamarius Burton with two offensive rebounds yep. that were just yep. strength and effort, where he just ripped it Absolutely. away. Absolutely. But, but, you know, because, because he was going, they weren't expecting him. He hadn't been going, so they weren't expecting him. Yeah. And, those, and again, it's a numbers game. He was along the baseline, and nobody touched him. All you got to do is grab the ball. So being, you, you don't get those if you don't go. You have to go, and, and Jamarius came up with two big ones. I think he may have scored on one and maybe assisted on the other, or on the last one. I know that we just ran clock because uh, uh, right before that uh, Dexter just dribbled the ball and handed it to him so I said okay <laughs> we're, we're not going to look to score here for a while we're just going to at the very end I thought we got a great look the very first time Samaje dribbled it out uh, he did a great pass fake and was able to go to Jamie on the roll and uh, I think we missed but somehow came up with the ball. McDuffie was masterful. He played a real good uh, game from start to finish, but five offensive rebounds. And those five offensive rebounds, I think he converted at least four of them into baskets for you. Yeah, he, he, he was <coughs> electric on the offensive glass. He made <coughs> some mid-range shots. He made a couple of threes. The only thing I didn't like, he, uh, he forced his first three right here. It was a bad. He caught it. He held it out of rhythm and took a bad shot. I think it was an air ball. And then one time in the press, one of the first times we ran the press, somehow he got matched up with Barnes, and he shouldn't allow Barnes just to drive him because Barnes is a driver, and he just laid the ball in. But 
we, we, we don't win that game without the contributions of our senior Marcus McDuffie. An additional thing, uh, Daquan Jeffries is just a <coughs> fine, fine player, and he's been averaging about 15 points per ball game. And I thought you did a good job on him defensively. He was four of seven, but just to get seven looks at the basket was pretty impressive. Yeah, he, uh, he, he, get, he got us on the one play that they seem to get us on every time. We tell the, the, the guard, uh, whoever's guarding him to go underneath that long diagonal screen, and he just curls it, and he laid it in. So they got it. I think they dunked it on us last year. So we haven't adjusted very well to that, even though we talked about it and we worked on it. Um, and he's a very fine player. I, I thought between uh, Dexter and uh, JB and especially Marcus. They did a wonderful job on Jeffries, and I thought we did a very good job on Taplin. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. Taplin's, yes. Taplin's been great against us over the years, and both of those seniors didn't have their normal games against us, which is indicative of the final score. One last question. Looked like Asburn kind of got his bell rung. Yeah, uh, he, he got hit in the nose. They do not think it's broken. Uh, they do think that uh, he has some type of head injury, but he told me that he felt fine and, and, and hopefully will feel fine tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the big test. You know, if he, if he has any type of symptoms, they'll put him in that concussion protocol. So uh, just keep your fingers crossed because he's been playing pretty well. Didn't have a great game tonight, but he's been playing very well, and hopefully, obviously, we'd never want a kid to be hurt like that. Coach, congratulations. All right, thank you win. so much. All right, thank you. Shocker head coach Greg Marshall. Okay.